The political story of the moment is the failure of the Republican Party to choose a Speaker of the House. Lauren Boebert is one of the 20 Republicans who has blocked Kevin McCarthy from becoming the Speaker. All of this is stopping the start of Congress. And on behalf of Americans who would like a functioning government, I got one big question. Why? Joining me now is Republican Congresswoman-elect Lauren Boebert of Colorado to answer that very question. Congresswoman, welcome to our program. You're opposed to Kevin McCarthy. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Uh, I know mm -hmm. negotiations took place tonight. Is he now offering anything that will win your vote? Well, I've not personally uh, spoke to Kevin McCarthy, but look, Stephanie, these conversations started back in the summer. And, uh, you know, we were kind of dismissed then because there was supposed to be this really big red wave. You know, Kevin McCarthy raised $300 million and then failed to produce that big red wave, uh, even with all of the Democrat policies that are failing our country and so many different um, directions we could go with that to actually gain a massive majority. But he failed to deliver that. And when he realized, he actually needed our votes. That's when he started entertaining some of the proposals that we had to the rules and the way things function here in Washington, D.C. And um, unfortunately, he has rejected um, up to the very last moment some of the most important things that we were presenting to him. He's accepted some rules, which are really great, but we're not quite there yet. We want to fundamentally change the way Washington, D.C. operates. If you ask Americans, well, they're pretty frustrated at Washington, D.C., and that was before January 3rd. Um, and we are trying to fix that. We want a leader who will actually empower each individual member. This isn't anything for personal gain um, for a select few. This is for every elected representative. And they are very common sense um, requests that we have, and we have not been granted those. So Kevin McCarthy had an opportunity January 2nd. Um, I, I brought some of these never never. Kevin voters. Um, uh, there were three of us that were in a room and um, one of whom worked very, very hard to make sure that we were able to get people to um, to this place where Kevin could get the gavel on the very first ballot. And Kevin laughed us out of the room and then lied about the negotiations that were taking place. So now here we are. We are 20 strong um, against Kevin McCarthy. And as the Constitution reads, he doesn't have 218. So he's not speaker. But most Republicans are with him. I mean, half the Freedom Caucus is. It wasn't like he came out of nowhere. He got the nomination from Republicans resoundingly in November. Why wouldn't you take the route of, say, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who shares much of your ideology, take the win, get practical, get yourself on a bunch of committees, and actually do something to set policy? We are absolutely in the works of doing something to set policy. Uh, wow. We want a secure border. We, we're working with people who will come together and, and accept this rules package. Kevin McCarthy has, um, has dismissed it and said that he would not agree to everything. We want, impl impl um, we want to implement policies on the floor that allow um, any member who's wanting to reduce the debt to have that amendment made in order. We want a balanced budget to come to the floor. We want a secure border bill that was crafted by the Texas delegation to come to the floor. And okay, that isn't something that we heard before this started. I want you and I to stay focused tonight because you and I can discuss policy every day, any sure. day. None of those things can happen unless a speaker is set and you don't have that. So Kevin McCarthy is pretty conservative. He has given you a lot of what you want. Is it that you just can't stand the guy? Oh, no, this is absolutely uh, nothing personal against Kevin McCarthy. Um, we will elect anyone who will actually unite the Republican Party, but Kevin McCarthy has proven that he's not that person. When the conference voted for him, there were 36 that voted against him that said that they didn't want him as speaker. Right now, we're sitting at 20, and I'm only seeing increased opposition. Um, it, it's, it's really hard to negotiate when you don't have um, a, a lever of trust to, to have those negotiations 
actions with. That's why my hard line from the beginning was the motion to vacate. This is something that's been around for nearly two centuries, and Nancy Pelosi was the first Speaker of the House to remove this um, and take that authority away from every single member of Congress to have a check and a balance on the third in line to the presidency of the United States. He's willing and to give Kevin you McCarthy five. wanted. Kevin McCarthy wanted to follow her president precedents through and through, and then he did move it down to five. And he knew that my position was going back to Je Thomas Jefferson's motion of one single member motion to vacate. This is imperative. You cannot demand more responsibility and less accountability. We have to have somebody, if, if we cannot trust them, then we have to make sure that there is a check and a balance and that there are rules in place. We need the tools that are available to us to actually govern the way that we campaigned. Okay, then here's where I'm scratching my head. If you're talking about a person that'll unite the Republican Party, I heard you this afternoon talk about consensus. Perhaps you and I have a different definition of consensus. He's got 200 votes. Yesterday, you backed Jim Jordan. Today, you're backing Byron Donalds as speaker. He's got 20 votes. You think that guy's getting to 218 tomorrow? I uh, know that there are many of our colleagues who are cheering us on silently um, and silently voting for won't Kevin help, McCarthy. 218 oh, but we're, votes. We're going to get there. I, I'm as gonna be long honest as it with takes, you. we are going to get there and we're going to make sure that this is right for the American people. We want to see change in Washington, D.C., and we want to see policies um, that are passed that actually help the American people. Look, Kevin McCarthy has been in leadership for 14 years. What does he have to show for that? We I, aren't just electing somebody who can fundraise and, and just rubber stamp him into office. That's not what I was elected to do. What you're seeing here is a constitutional republic at work. It, it may look messy, it may look chaotic, no, but this is no, us working me. and actually and, and using our votes. And I believe our founding fathers intended it to be this way. Okay, well, our founding fathers aren't here, so let's get real and let's get practical. You can say what you believe. I believe children is, though, are our so future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. That's a song. You are backing a guy with 20 votes. Is he getting to 218 tomorrow? People who are silently cheering him on will not help when they round every up and ask for a vote tomorrow. I do believe that we are seeing growing opposition to Kevin McCarthy. Um, they've heard the conversations that happen when our Republican conference is gathered. Um, they are very disappointed in some of the things that have been said by our current leadership. And um, they're waiting for the time to be right. And I believe you will see that increased um, opposition. And I'm here for it. As long as it takes, we are going to get this right. Um, look, we, we took the House and we are ready to lead effectively, but we have to to have the right tools and the right leadership to do just that. Okay, then let's actually name names. I, I'm going to be bold. I'm going to take the leap and say Byron Donalds is not going to get to 218. This is a guy most people don't even know if his first name is his last name or his last name is his first. So let's go with realistic names. Could you support Steve Scalise? I, I don't think that I could support any current leadership, um, and I believe that many of my um, colleagues um, feel the same way. Um, we need a change in leadership. And um, so that isn't a name that I'm entertaining. Um, but I'm sure that you'll see McHenry? several names. Not for me. You will see many names that are coming about. Patrick McHenry is a great guy, but um, you'll see many names evolve in this because we're showing that we have a, a menu of people. And maybe Patrick McHenry comes to us and, and tells us, hey, these are really great rules. These are great policies that you're wanting to bring to the floor. Maybe he puts the right personnel on the right committees, and maybe he is the guy. Um, maybe it's someone who um, is is not in Congress. Maybe it's someone like a Kevin Hearn, who is the chairman of the Republican Study Committee, who has actually produced a balanced budget that we want to see go to the floor. I don't know what these names are, but I'm sure that you're going to see a lot of names beginning to emerge because we're showing that we are willing to work to unify the Republican Party and get the right okay, person. Okay, sure. And, and maybe it's going to be me and Kim Kardashian and anyone else who can be out there. Would you How like me to nominate you, you tomorrow? How long are you willing to wait? I mean, the American people 
voted you in. You As waited some of my for this right you We could be here power. until the cherry Hold blossoms second, bloom. Ma'am. You've got the power. And every day that passes that you're not doing your jobs, voters are saying, hold on a second, I voted you in to get something done. So when you talk about names coming up and evolving, give me a timeline. How long are you willing to wait for this evolution? Well, actually, I, I look at it in a, a very different way. I see it as Congress not spending money that they don't have, um, because every day that I've been in Congress, we've done exactly that. So the taxpayers are actually winning here uh, because Congress hasn't organized. Look, my conservative colleagues and no, I are simply me. I, I'm asking interrupt for you. commitments I'm interrupt on what the American people want to see. Sure. It, with every passing day, it's not that Congress isn't spending money. Anything that was put in place during, during Nancy Pelosi's term, none of that is going to stop. And until you put a speaker in place, nothing that you want to do is getting done. Well, unfortunately, the Senate took away our authority um, to even work with a budget uh, for the next nine months. Nancy Pelosi is ruling with a dead hand anyway. They just spent $1.7 trillion on an omnibus bill and took away all of that authority. All of the member elects um, that were currently elected, all of our freshmen, they don't have a say on the spending for the next nine months because... The Senate gave that away. Republicans ran on and uh, and and we won a majority on um, because we had a message that was uniting America and bringing us back to this place where we can actually have real leadership and pass uh, uh, agendas that secure our southern border okay, then, and then balance a budget and America. Lower the American voter does want Congress to work together. Right. Look at your last mm -hmm. election. You represent a red district that Donald Trump handily won and you won narrowly. And the takeaway for the entire midterms is that the country said we are done with hyper partisanship. We want Congress to get to work and to work together. We saw today Mitch McConnell, President Biden, Mike DeWine, them working together, talking infrastructure in Kentucky. And what you're doing today is blocking your own party. Is that what your voters asked you to do? So what I hear back at home all the time from my constituents is they're furious about what the Democrats have been doing all of this time. They're furious about the border crisis, the energy crisis, the historic inflation, and so much more. And we will handle these issues and conduct serious oversight real soon when we get the speaker's position right. It's been two days. It's, it's not the end of the world. We are going to come together. We tried to do this privately. Unfortunately, Kevin McCarthy wanted to take this battle to the floor. And that's where we're at right now. Uh, but we're standing strong, and uh, Kevin McCarthy does not have 218. Okay, taxpayers are paying your salary while we are waiting for this. And again, we can talk policies uh, on many days. I mean, you want to talk inflation? Sure, we can. Inflation is too high, but let's look at it. We've got unemployment. There's two jobs for every unemployed person. Gas prices are lower today than they were yes, a year Joe ago. Biden's economy Things is are terrible moving for the, the American people. You are correct. We are living in a complicated economy, ma'am. We're not living in a bad economy. And I invite you back another night. It was to great under it. President Trump. We're going to, you know what, I'm, I would love for you to come back and discuss that with me because we can get into it in sure. great detail. And as Welcome long as you to. mentioned Donald Trump, how does he feel about the position that you're taking? And Michelle Sindor said it in the last block. Donald Trump hates a loser. And you are going against mm. Donald Trump. I mean, today you basically said, hey, Donald Look, Trump. Look, I love President you, Donald Trump. And I suggested that he call Kevin McCarthy and inform him that he does not have the votes and withdraw from the race. Uh, so I, I love President Trump and no one's going to pit me against him. Um, Kevin McCarthy doesn't have this. I understand where the president is, is right now. Uh, but history will show we're on the right side of this. Have you spoken to Trump in the last 24 hours? I have not. Last question to you, Dan Crenshaw and these other Republicans. Do you see yourself working with them again? He called, in the last 24 hours, he's called you the enemy, and he said you'd rather work with Democrats than Republicans. He thinks you're doing all of this for attention, and let's be honest, you've never been well, on I've with me before. I've seen Dan Crenshaw work with uh, Democrats on red flag laws. So, uh, you know, I mean, this is... This is just how things operate here. We are going to come together. We are going to be stronger than ever. We're going to handle um, the issues that the American people care about 
we just need to elect a speaker. And it's okay if it takes a couple of days. It's not the end of the world. There will be a new a new cycle that comes around when we get to work and you see how productive we can actually be when we are united. I believe that we will find that consensus candidate and someone who can reunite the Republican Party. And I look forward to that day. 218 is a long way for, from 20. I welcome you to come back and discuss that with me. And if you'd like to come back another night and talk red flag laws, you're welcome to. They are overwhelmingly popular with the American voter. Congresswoman-elect oh, Lauren Bilber, Stephanie, thank, you thank you so for much. joining me.